everybody, what's going on? I thought that I would talk a little bit about something which I've been noticing kind of as an undercurrent in a lot of the uh, consultations that I've been doing lately and uh, putting an astrological name tag on it so that we can kind of understand what's going on. And that is a struggle a struggle that everybody seems to be having. So let's talk about that a little bit. You know, one of those things that we hear a lot in uh, spiritual talk is the concept of you've got to follow your heart. And that sounds simply and simply, that sounds simple enough, simply, simple, simply, simple, simple, simply, simple tune, <laughs> right? <laughs> Following your heart, right? That sounds simple enough. But what if you don't know where your heart is? What do you do? What if your heart's broken in a million pieces and it's laying on the floor? How can you follow your heart, right? Because there's a piece that's leading you over there and a piece that's leading you in that direction and a piece that's leading you forward and a piece that's leading you backwards. And you're just going, which direction I'm gonna, am I going to go in, right? Which direction can I turn to? Where, where is my heart, right? And what if your heart is torn between one direction and another direction? You can't decide which of those paths that you want to take. And what if you just have not had a chance to really tune into your heart in a long time because you've just been stuck up in the daily mundane struggle nine to five and all of that stuff and you have no earthly idea of where your heart is, then how are you going to follow your heart? And that seems to be a theme that people are going through right now. Some sort of purification, not knowing where their heart is or where their heart is is changing. Uh, where they're feeling compelled to move towards or how they're uh, being compelled to act is changing and evolving. And what's actually going on is Mars has shifted into Purva Ashada Nakshatra, whilst Venus is in Vishaka Nakshatra. And I want to talk a little bit more in depth about those two particular nakshatras and um, what's going on with that. Let's start with Purva Ashada and some of the things that are connected to it. First of all, it's connected to Apas, which is a water deity. And we know a lot about water. Water can purify, water can cleanse. As a matter of fact, Purva Ashada gives the power of invigoration. But think also of water as it comes from a certain source and spreads out to the shores. And think of those shores expanding over time. And on a certain level, you have the concept of a human consciousness. Um, that human consciousness on a certain level has this, what I would call a causal nature underneath it, something that's natural to that something that is authentic. So on a certain level, you can say that Purva Ashada is authenticity. It's where we are authentically at. And how from our authenticity, uh, things tend to uh, ripple out from the center of our being. Uh, by the very nature of our being, things happen in our life, right? Whether those things that are happening are good or bad, um, is in some ways intrinsically connected to the purity to which we are able to connect to that source at the bottom of the spring of the waters that spread out. And those waters spread out to infinity, right? But let's face it, most of us get caught up in this stupid struggle where, you know, we uh, feel one way inside of ourselves, but we're never really able to let on that we feel that way inside of ourselves. And instead, we tend to kind of put on a certain face in order to get by with the day-to-day -day existence. And then we forget where that source originates from, what that source is all about, right? So we can't be in touch with it. And so what has to happen at that point is a process of uh, shedding away layers of the ego, um, layers of those, um, I want to say, superficial expressions that we have to put forward to the world. That just begins to all kind of come apart at the seams 
until we get to a level underneath that where we are truly and actually understanding the truth of where we are at, right? This process is particularly deepened because Purva Ashada being connected to Venus, there's a connection with Venus being in Vishaka Nakshatra. And Vishaka Nakshatra, I often like using the analogy of a crucible, a melting pot, right? Where there is a very powerful purification process that's going on. As a matter of fact, um, Vishaka Nakshatra is connected to Indragni, which is a dual deity of Indra and Agni, right? Indra being the king of the gods, uh, the king of the gods who attained his status by performing all these severe penances, and Agni being the uh, god of fire, purification, uh, warmth, uh, support. But we want to focus primarily on the purification aspect. So there's the concept of coming into um, contact with your own divine stature, with your own divine strength, as per Indra, through a process of purification. Uh, Vishaka Nakshatra gives the power to achieve many and various fruits. And what happens with that? Well, we try this thing, and we try that thing, and we try a lot of different things until we can figure out what is exactly right. So you have these two planets, right? Um, kind of involved with each other, mainly because Mars is in Purva Ashada, and you've got Venus in Vishaka Nakshatra. So you've got this deep purification process that you're going through and likely facing a lot of opposition um, to the way that you're acting. Why? Because your ego is needing to kind of peel back a little bit so that you can understand your heart because your heart's been kind of hidden to you. Uh, for a decent amount of time. And so there's this process of purifying and going, you know, something is out of sync here, and I don't really know how I feel about this. Otherwise, I would take action, but I don't really know what action to take because I don't really know where my heart is. And that's a difficult thing. And that's where Jupiter comes into the equation. Jupiter, which is uh, the nakshatra lord of Vishaka nakshatra. And Jupiter is in Hasta nakshatra. Hot Hasta gives the power to gain what one is seeking and place it in one's hands. In short, the power of manifestation. But there's always a struggle that's involved with Hasta. And with the particular interaction between all of these planets, there's a struggle that's happening potentially in everybody's day-to-day -day existence on a certain level where you're trying to figure out where your heart is with something, how you feel, so you can take action to begin to create a change in your life. And this is building up. If we, have to, we have to look at also at the fact, sorry, getting excited here. <laughs> We have to look also at the fact that Jupiter being in Hasta Nakshatra is going to have some connections to the moon. And we're building towards a full moon. And as a matter of fact, Venus and Mars will be in those two nakshatras, uh, Mars in Purva Ashada and Venus in Vishaka Nakshatra, until two days prior to the full moon. So it's building up to a crescendo for a full moon in Ashwini Nakshatra. Ashwini Nakshatra about uh, bringing uh, quick, fast solutions, the power to reach things quickly, and to act in a dharmically way, to do what's right, because it's associated with the Ashwin Kumars, who throughout the mythology connected with the Ashwin Kumars, they were always wanting to act on dharma. And each of us are wanting to do the right thing, but we're not really sure what that right thing is. And this is building up. There's going to be some clarity that comes your way right about the full moon. And with that clarity, there's going to be a building sense of determination because Mars in Purva Ashada is going to shift into Uttara Ashada. But the lesson with this is, you know, how hard are you going to push against the resistance? right? Do you really feel confident inside of yourself? Are you masking that confidence by bolstering your strength? Be careful of doing that because then you're losing touch with your heart again. So keep the awareness open. That's what you need to do with that. Venus can help you with that because Venus is going to shift into Anuradha Nakshatra, giving you a clearer perspective on the situation, helping to put things in perspective, helping you to see things with right judgment so that you're able to take take the right actions. So this is going to be taking place in everybody's chart 
in a completely different area of their life. And that is dependent upon where these planets are transiting in your particular chart, uh, where certain things are located in your natal chart. And if you'd like an understanding of this process, well, I do offer a vast range of astrological services. And if you would like to schedule one of those with me, there is a link in the video or further down on the page, which will take you to my astrological services page. That's going to do it for this look at Mars in Purva Ashaba and Venus in Vishaka Nakshatra. This is going to last up until the 14th, and then we've got a full moon in Ashwini Nakshatra. More on that full moon in a few days. But until then, please do take the very best care of yourself. Bye now.